morning. I just want to run through a few of the, the basics and I then want to show you a 10 minute film of what uh, happens in the webinars and what sorts of things we talk about. What I first would like to say is I have run this course once with a beta group and those were the online and face-to-face -face or those that came to the venues for the practical training. So this will be the first time that it's run online. I'm perfectly confident about this because, because of COVID, we had to run two out of the six sessions online and they worked way better than they would have done if I'd have run a practical for it. I wanted to create a saddle fitting course, but then I realized that I needed to split this into different awards. So what we're talking about today and um, what you've expressed an interest in is this one applied kinetic anatomy biomechanics and identifying asymmetry in the horse saddle rider combination and it is a standalone award i want to only teach it to practitioners and competition riders because i need to know that you are safe enough around horses and around riders to be able to carry out some tests and keep yourself safe and the rider safe. So that's who can join me. Anyone who's already working with horses or competition riders who's got a great deal of knowledge because I won't be teaching how to put a head collar on a horse. So we can see the different modules. We'll start with study skills. Then we go into applied kinetic anatomy and biomechanics. And then we have pain pathology and posture or compensatory gait in the horse. And we'll be identifying rider postural asymmetry and doing some saddle and bridle fit checking as well. And I will show you what that sheet looks like in a moment it's quite detailed so what these arrows mean is that if you want to you can then progress to preparing the horse saddle rider combination for performance so you have manual techniques in there and rider stabilization methods and equine back and postural strengthening methods for saddle fitting ground schooling as well and that would lead to, I also have accreditation with IRVAP so, or the Institute of Registered Veterinary and Animal Physiotherapists, but that does have hands-on with the horse to get the registration with IRVAP, although I have got a module, a top-up module uh, for existing practitioners, but that would not get you into IRVAP. So experienced saddle fitters, so for those who don't want to go down this route first, obviously this, these, these can then progress into performance saddle and bridle fitting, but you'll see that some of the modules they would already have done. And experienced saddle fitters can do this level of the course and then go on to performance saddle and bridle fitting. But this part is on hold because of COVID. So I just want to go back and show you. I devised this evaluation of the horse, saddle and rider. There's four pages of it. Basically for the rider, when we're doing the rider evaluation, I won't go through all four pages, but I want to know things like rider's skill level. So all you're doing with this sheet really is it's almost a tick box exercise. So I've done the work for you. And you just have to make notes or circle things. So you'll want to give them a basic postural analysis, walk away, walk back, look at them doing a single leg squat, uh, look at how their rib cage fits into the pelvis, look at the protraction, retraction of the shoulders. Walking backwards, you're going to put them on a saddle stand. I'll show you a bit of, uh, of this later. There'll be some exercises for them to do. You'll assess the core strength. You'll take a seat bone imprint and analyze that, that's very exciting. 
and then you will put them in their own saddle and see what's going on. So talking about their posture and how far away it is from effective neutral pelvis posture. And this is where you could get the shock is when you see how their saddle seat them and you relate that to the posture asymmetries that you have uncovered. So then the horse uh, will, will identify it, how long it's been owned for, what it's doing, condition scoring, we'll cover that. And we'll look at their current nutrition strategy, whether they're gaining weight, losing weight or maintaining it work and injury history and I want to know if it's having veterinary treatment I want to know is it going to change shape what's the likelihood and we'll look at the horse's posture and we'll do some tests on that and look for asymmetry in the horse and the gait analysis and we'll look at walk trot we'll look at them on a circle we'll look at them with the rider without the rider lots of information to be had there so it's not a straightforward trot up walk away walk back trot away trot back let me see from the side there'll be more there because we can expect 50 percent or so of these horses to show some signs of discomfort lameness as dr sue dyson has found in 2014. It's a pretty bleak picture out there that many lamenesses won't even show up in a trot up and we're getting compensatory gait and uh, even more when the rider gets on. And then we'll palpate, again we'll do some tests to dynamically assess their symmetry and just generally get a picture of what sort of athlete they are how how do they perform how can they perform better we'll check the bridle we'll check the saddle we'll check how the rider puts it on the back we'll check the horse's reaction to the saddle stability gullet clearance tree point length girth type and so on and so on tree symmetry we'll talk about saddle pads and we'll we'll really get a picture of this horse saddle and rider as a combination there i i get a little bit ticked off with the research out there because not all of it is applicable to the individual horse saddle rider combination so we can look at saddle pads and look at saddle panel types and say oh don't use this because of that and don't use this because of that well what you would be doing is looking at the combination and saying well i think perhaps this horse needs a bit more development on its back muscle development so for now we're going to use a pad so the horse is comfortable so that there can be more blood circulation so that the horses can develop and so on and so on and so on so we we're going i'm going to teach you to have the courage <laughs> to to look at the physics of the horse saddle rider combination so the more you look the more asymmetry you find this is about coping with or organizing the body against or the performance horse and rider against the forces of gravity so we're going to look carefully at the rider and this is where this course is unique because i want you to look more at the potential of the horse and rider to perform better in whatever discipline it is and, and usually it's the novice dressage riders which are calling out for more input and i feel they're not getting it and as riders we we there's no doubt that we inhibit the horse's movement back movement is inhibited with the rider but if we make the rider more stable then magical movement starts to happen so one of the things we do at the very end of the assessment providing it's safe to do so and we're in an arena and the rider's quite happy 
to do some walk and trot, possibly some canter in the arena. I will show you how to make a couple of or a series of rider tweaks so that suddenly their horse is able to move. So assessing the potential for that and then saying, look, here's what you can do. Let's get you the help to make sure you can sustain that. So let's go back to our presentation again. OK, so I've talked about the full award and where where this particular award fits in here into the scheme. But it's absolutely fine that you can just do this if you want to but you will come out with the award and on your certificate will be this and the fact that you're competent at this so just to be clear about what you will be able to do at the end of the course successfully completing it of course you'll be able to observe and test for rider asymmetry on and off their horses You'll be able to make basic postural corrections to assess potential for gait or performance improvement. I put a lot of emphasis on the horse being more free in the front end to move up through the withers and move under the rider and up rather than just heavy footfall. The difference is amazing and the riders report how much lighter their horses are so the course will help you or help the rider to develop lightness and therefore healthier movement in the gait and the riders absolutely love it when they feel their horses just getting lighter underneath them and I can do that in under 10 minutes sometimes it's five so again, not rocket science, but when you start evaluating for all this, you will realise how much the rider can do to help their horses. And just having a dialogue with the rider and really helping them to achieve their equitation goals by identifying the asymmetries in the combination. Most riders get stuck at prelim dressage level or they never jump higher than 80 centimetres. That's for the majority of riders, riding club types. And yeah, most are happy with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying we've got to make them all Grand Prix riders, but most of them struggle even with prelim and novice. So I like to think that there is this system which will, when the horse and rider have less asymmetry, they're both more stable and balanced and their performance potential goes up exponentially. And you'll be able to carry out basic saddle and bridle fit checking. And the whole point of this is so that at the end, the assignment is to formulate a performance progression plan. So what that means is that you will complete a case report or three case reports and some uh, three five minute films. And you will put together a program of who to refer to and that's the outcome, learning outcome, is to refer to paraprofessionals for resolution if you don't have a particular skill set yourself. Although <laughs> uh, my, my grand scheme was that the whole course, which has the performance element in there, preparing the horse for, for performance, and to and for performance saddle fitting that was the whole program uh, obviously not not the vet side of things but that's the 2021 vision so what's the what does equivalent level three mean i'll just read it out for you that the holder has factual, procedural and theoretical knowledge and understanding of a subject or field of work to complete tasks 
and address problems that well defined that while well defined may be complex and non routine that's what we get with the horse saddle rider combination and that the holder can interpret and evaluate relevant information and ideas. So you'll gather information, then decide what to do with it. The holder is aware of the nature of the area of study or work. Yeah, so you're already practitioners. So, you know, you, you will already know about equitation and care, equine care. And the holder is aware of different perspectives or approaches within the area of study or work. Again, this ties in with being able to refer and work together as a team to, to get the rider's aspirations fulfilled with their horse and or. The holder can identify, select and use appropriate cognitive and practical skills methods and procedures to address problems that while well defined may be complex and non-routine. Holder can use appropriate investigation to inform actions. Holder can review how effective methods and actions have been. So again, testing, monitoring and then making a decision as to where to go from there. So a bit about the course accreditation, there are no final grades. So either you pass or you're not yet competent. And it's about adult vocational lifelong learning. It's non-compulsory. And what that means for this course is that it's more training rather than academic with this academic standard that says it's an A level or an HND. So it's very much a course that I've put together. It's, it's, it's unique to the industry. And it's accredited by Lantra, which they, they hold land based vocational courses. So in other words, when I call them up, they understand what it means to train people for agricultural land-based vocational skills, that they understand that. So they understand that you can't just write an essay on saddle fitting after having had a demonstration and then say you're competent. That, that is not what they're about. Whereas I have been through... Uh, um, a research process which has taken a couple of years and there are some accreditors out there who will actually take your application and it's just a box ticking exercise but I am fully behind Lantra and they are introducing more and more horse courses so I'm really happy with them and this means that they scrutinize me for the learning experience that the learners will get. They're looking at quality. So whatever standards are set by me, I have to follow them. I, I am fair, so I have to make allowances, for example, if a learner perhaps cannot do something, maybe if they've got a some sort of learning disability. I have to work with the learner to make sure that they fully get what they need out of the course so that they can become competent at the end, for example. And the delivery is scrutinized. So they're checking, they're checking how I do what I do. So I have to be, I have to make lots of films. <laughs> Well, I don't have to, but I do just as evidence that I am actually doing what I've said I'm going to do and that there's consistency within the course. So you can, yeah, the course will evolve, but what it means is that every learner will get on. So if you take the course now, it will be the same next year. Well, it won't be any uh, less next year. It may have evolved, but it means that the 
certification is the same standard and level every year. And they've checked my professional competence and of anyone else who is um, delivering for me. And it is about compliance. Together we've set standards and I have to comply with them or they deregister me. <laughs> and this RPL, that means recognition of prior learning. So I know that I had one or two vets interested in this course. So for example, I'm not going to insist that they do the anatomy exercises. So this is looked at on an individual basis. And if you come to me and say, look, I've got already done this or got experience with this, that I may say, well, OK, you don't have to do that assignment. Uh, you can take part in the lectures or the presentations, but I won't expect an assignment from you for that. So I'll work with you on that. So what about the course format? It's 136 hours. Now that might sound like a lot, <laughs> but I figured you, you needed, you need about that level or a minimum of 136 hours for you to be able to carry out all the tests on the horse and the rider and the saddle and come up with a plan and also I cover muscle conditioning and movement analysis so you, you will be making a very considered evaluation of the horse and saddle horse saddle and rider combination and I'm aiming to start on the 28th of October and it will finish at the end of March it's 100% vocational. You will not have to do a research project. And, you know, it's about making whatever job you do, whatever input you've got with horses, it's about making your job the best it can be for the horse, saddle and rider as a combination. So filling in the gaps that you might have from day one you have to hit the ground running you'll be given different tasks to do so you might be given condition scoring or mapping out the available area on the horse's back for a saddle for example and there'll be an assignment for each module so you get six assignments but over the course of the five months, you, you will uh, you'll complete an assignment approximately every month. There might be two assignments in the first month, but you know I've paced it so that your modules and your assignments are spaced out and that so that you have more time to assimilate the knowledge and to also time to prepare for the next module so I, I i would like to say i keep up the pressure but as i say it you won't have to skid to a halt on the 31st of march uh, and have an an unfair exam or an one that's a different exam to someone else because they get a better horse or an easier saddle or whatever whatever or you know some cases can be really complex and you know I don't want you having to talk to the rider for the whole of the exam just because there's a lot of history there I would rather you assess that horse at your own leisure in your own time and think about what you're going to put in your reports so I'm kind, really. It's the best way for vocational study. You'll have 36 hours of guided learning over five months. So what's guided learning? It's in this format now where I'm present, learners are present, we interact 
I introduce a topic, we go through the topic, you ask questions, I answer them. <laughs> And very much it's interactive. You will, would not be able to look at a replay and say, ah, I was there because we're strict about what guided learning is and you need to be guided for, for this task. It's, it's a little more difficult. It's not rocket science, as I said. It's difficult to look at the horse saddle and rider combination. There's a lot of information that you'll be hit with because probably chances are at the moment you may only work with one aspect of horse care. And this means you, you need to consider three. So you can get a bit bogged down with it, although I do help you to organise your thoughts. So the plan is to do weekly two hour webinars, but we'll have a four hour Saturday once each month for four months. Might increase that. <laughs> Maybe do one a fortnight if, if it's needed. So, you know, we've got the scope to do that, but it will be 36 hours of you and I interacting about horse saddle rider combinations and what i'm really looking forward to about this and i think what's better than having uh, a final assignment in person is that i want us to be sharing the findings that we're finding i want us to be able to look at different you know whatever you've gone off to find out in your assignments I'd like to see different pictures of different horses different movement and I'd like us to all talk about that together it might horrify you to be a presenter but I don't mind send me a film I'll make it easy for you I'll do it <laughs> and just tease you into the conversation and we'll just ask you questions and I think that will make for a really enjoyable learning experience. I know the first time I did a presentation at university, I, I actually thought I was going to pass out and my mouth got all dry and I got so, oh, so uptight about it. But I thought, well, do you know what? At least, at least I'm getting to listen to everyone else's presentations and I'm really going to enjoy them. And I did. So like anything else, it's a skill. Once you start and get on with it, it's, it's really good. And once you know you're doing it for the horses, it's not about our egos at all. None of this is about us at all. It's about the horses. 60 hours independent study. So that means you'll be out there getting your hands on the horses, learning how to make films <laughs> that, are, um, that we can watch. <laughs> that are nice and clear and yeah th there's nothing more difficult nothing more it's quite straightforward I'm not going to ask you to write reams and reams and reams at all we're purely seeing what you're going to come across with these horse saddle rider combinations and going from there and seeing what they need so 60 hours out there doing your assignments 40 hours hands-on about that and I mentioned the assessments earlier they're digital so whereas for the last group where we were face to face for uh, some of the practicals they had to write up portfolios but what I want for this online group is that you will produce film <laughs> so i want to see you doing you don't have to be in frame that's 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 not you know you don't need to you know get a get a, a makeup artist or anything <laughs> i want to see that you're doing the assignments and i want to see the results you get so that will mean a couple of minutes of film. For example, if I ask you to condition score three horses, I want to see that in film. I don't want to see it written. 
I want to see evidence. A lot of photography and videography, or it's photography, videography based rather than writing. And the assessments are formative. So a couple of the assignments will be, well, go off and do this and come back and we'll see what feedback, what progress you made. And, you know, that's what formative is. And as I mentioned, the presentations, don't stress about those at all. And the summative, at the end, there'll be three horse saddle and rider case studies, which I mentioned. And uh, the other summative or the marked assignments, which do count towards, you know, which you must pass. There's um, analyzing movement and muscle conditioning. So again, it just basically you'll be going out there, getting your hands on, getting some information and coming back and possibly taking it in turns to present and pooling the knowledge that you find. So, yeah, if you really, really think, oh, no, I can't present well, just think of it as knowledge sharing. You know, if you make a contribution and someone else makes a contribution, then that's a fair, fair swap. So course content, this is the type of things we get up to. So lots on posture, kinetic anatomy. So we've got myofascial lines here. We've got the available area on the, sat on the horse's back. We've got rider assessment. Then we've got saddle fitting. We've got the rider assessment, getting them to do all sorts of strange things, all in the name of equitation and uh, yes, we're going to need to invest in these jackets or make our own with the uh, neat lines on them. And again, this is about putting the rider on the horse and seeing what happens there. So we start with the introduction to study skills, which you'll find really interesting. There's not, not much of it to do, but... I have to make sure that you can organize yourself sufficiently to dedicate six hours a week and some six or seven hours and some writing up of what you're doing. Uh, and so I put some time management in here as well. So I'm sure you'll find it useful for uh, life in general to do this. So. And also looking at learning styles. That's really interesting. You'll notice that I'm very visual. And you'll learn basic film creation. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> but I will teach you that. And that's your evidence. And that's a good thing. It's not, you know, because of Lantra want to prove that I'm doing what I say I'm doing you need it's really useful to come up with images as evidence and you can see more more much more from an image in a film than sometimes you can in person not always but you can look at a film later and go wow i didn't see that earlier and it means something a bit of presenting i won't keep keep banging on about that and this is really useful for, you know, if you do find you're really getting in pain with it, just think about your social media PR in the future and what great skill you'll have acquired by doing this course. And then we'll go on to applied kinetic functional anatomy, which majority of that's online already. So you can look at those lectures at your leisure. Applied biomechanics, we'll be working with physics, but I'm not going to get you a thousand studies out because this is about individual horse, saddle and rider combinations. And we're going to be identifying asymmetry in the horse, the saddle and the rider. So obviously not physical asymmetry of the saddle as in the panels, but the asymmetry of the pressure and the load that's going down through it by the rider. You see, 
these saddles are absolutely wonderful until you put a rider on them <laughs> then they go bad and communication that's uh, an aspect that that runs through this course a lot because of the report writing uh, at the end and also risk assessment and interacting with your uh, with your peers and with your teacher <laughs> and also your clients and we must put safety first obviously so we can do some risk assessment exercises so I need to know that you're safe because because not all therapists have had the training, for example, of being able to observe a rider. So I need to know that in your observations and with your very mild interventions that you're going to be doing with the horses, you're going to be 100% safe. And again, a communication is for the final assignment. How are you going to communicate all your findings to a vet, a saddle fitter, a coach, a therapist. So when we move it from a diagram here, this simple little diagram, we can apply it to here. Where is it? What joint does it cross? What joint? What's that joint movement? You know, does that hip joint flex and extend? Yes. So if I put the muscle here, it's going to extend it. Where do I have to put the muscle if I want to flex it? Yes, if it's too flexible, it's unstable. Well done. A degree of flexibility, but also stable. Yeah, because again, we've got to distribute weight. Slightly curved, not totally flat. Yeah, okay, okay. A flat tree would definitely bridge, yeah. Saddle suitable for rider weight, fitness and suppleness, length of leg, pelvic shape, etc. Yes, how much flexibility works in a saddle? Okay, over to Karen. How much flexibility works? Yeah. Yeah. What I want you to see here is that this horse has become a leg mover in this contraption. And yeah, of course it's building muscle. It's using its top line to maintain this posture. But have a look really carefully. There is no push up in this horse. All I think we're getting here is an isometric hold against the resistance of the legs propelling the horse along. So it's behind the vertical is where they get some relief from this. Look how much the limbs trail behind. Why should this horse want to push up in front? and lift through the thoracic sling because this this does not encourage the horse to lift through that sling at all can you see how this horse's weight is so down look here nothing the horse is compensating look how downhill and it's all legs Okay, right, and if you just step forward a bit and I'll just see your alignment from the side. Yeah, that's really good. And just face the cars. Very good. And just walk away. I'll just see what's happening in your waist. Off you go. Yeah. How does that feel? Got my triangle. You've got your triangle. Okay. So if you just uh, put your hands uh, as if you were riding, oh. as if you were holding the reins. Okay. Still, your foot tends to come forward a little bit. This one. Yeah. Just bring your yeah foot back a little. Okay. That's fine. 
and you've got your triangle. Yeah. I felt like it balanced it out, but I still needed to do a little more. And yeah. I felt bringing it forward yeah. was an easier and more secure arse, Okay, okay. Rather than having my right back. Yeah. So I but felt my left, left coming and it was literally a centimetre forward. Yeah, okay. Supported enough to yes. say. Yeah. Okay. So what I'd like to see now is just a figure of eight canter. And I'm just watching that left foot. I think your stirrups are more level now. How do your ankles feel now that I've padded the left? Yeah. Do you think we've quietened them down? Yeah. I think so too. Yippee! <laughs> Great. Stable, balanced. Remember the left hip forward, keep the contact with the saddle. Keep the shoulders in line, contracted. And the ribs, how much support can you get from your rib cage into your pelvis? Heavy thigh. Great. And we'll leave it there. Good boy. Yeah, she's doing it. So she's going up, up, up. Okay, just change back to your old settings. If you just take your hands away from the withers a little bit so you could see, that's it. And just go back to the old way. <laughs> she goes flat. Yeah, yeah, I really felt that. It's almost like the horse just gave up. Yes. If you know what I mean. She oh, no. they do. They absolutely do. That yes. Was huge. Just lose it again. <laughs> you can almost see her going, oh. You can feel her just go, no. Okay. And let's get the factory settings back again. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you can see she just creeps up like a she cat. She just gets lighter. Yes. Okay, so just then going through how to pass with ease. You need commitment, attendance, attention, and attention to detail. <laughs> Effective time management, so that's seven hours guided a week and independent learning. That's included in that as well and comprehensive yet concise assignments. So you need to get a proofreader and to submit your assignments on time. So what do you need? Access to reliable broadband, access to the Facebook learner forum, no problem with that. You need uh, about six plus horses, pony, saddles, rider, that's a minimum. A saddle stand or saddle buck for the rider to sit on off the horse. They, oh, you need risk assessed working conditions. So safe conditions that you can risk assess as safe to continue. Help with filming. <laughs> Kids are often better than this, better at this than adults. You need access to a personal computer with word processing software for compiling reports. You cannot do this on the phone and I'm not aware that you can do it on an iPad either. So here's what a computer looks like if you live your life on a phone. It can look like that or it can look like this. <laughs> you need to mug somebody to either get theirs or you need to invest in one or there are some pretty cheap options out there if you go to a local computer technician and a Windows video editing software the one I work with for this course is Windows 10 but if you've got another program you can work with that's fine too oh you need a phone not many people haven't got one of those so you need the camera option and a Gmail account so that you can access the tools and a Skype account that we need as a backup or to um, communicate amongst ourselves from time to time and another and that to be textbook costs there's your costs in three installments 575 at enrollment and there's a registration fee of 75 pounds and 575 at week eight 
and when you submit your final assignment there's 220 to pay because there are there's an external examiner and marking is a lengthy process and you would complete an application form uh, for which is a Lantra registration form and then you get your competence certified when all your modules and assignments have been passed and you if you don't get to the end you'll get just a participation only so you will not have your competence certified at all unless you get to the end assignments final assignments and these are the testimonials here and it, this course has been very well received and it's been very enjoyable i will be listing horse saddle rider practitioners looking at the horse saddle and rider as a combination and listing them on my horse saddle rider.com website so hopefully we'll build a nice network or a team between us